Hey everyone, welcome to Awareness with Ashley. My name is Ashley Stewart. I share a first-hand experience of what it's like living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. You will hear me call this IIH and migraines. I use my own experience to share what living with IIH and migraines is really like. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's podcast episode. So in today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about a topic that actually tends to blow people's minds when I mention it. And it's something I'm surprised I haven't actually dedicated an episode to yet, but that is how migraines are affected by the weather. Now, I've mentioned this in many other particular videos, especially early on. I've covered it in vlogs, and I've mentioned it before, especially in live shows. And this is probably one of my biggest triggers when it comes to what actually causes a migraine. And it, I find it just absolutely fascinates people. I think it's a very common trigger for a lot of us. Now, I'm not gonna really get into the mechanisms of how this happens because honestly, I think science doesn't really understand it very well either. I wanna just cover a few things about the ups and downs. I wanna cover seasonal changes and barometric pressure changes in general. Like I said, I'm not gonna be getting into like how this happens or anything but I'm just going to be getting into what happens and what I experience with changes in weather kind of what the worst time of year is when I struggle the most as well as why I've nicknamed this kind of like my secret superpower so when it comes to weather and migraines I find the biggest issues come up when it's the temperature changing drastically from kind of one temperature extreme to another. So I'll give you an example. This is the forecast for the next little bit. And so it's in Celsius, I can't change that. We're in Canada, so we use the metric system. So it's going to be a little chilly over the next couple of days, and then it's gonna warm up here, and then it's gonna drop significantly again. So this up and down weather can actually cause some very, very rough times with my migraines. And if people are wondering, actually, it often tends to be when I'm going from a very cold to a not so bad temperature. So if it was going from minus 20 degrees Celsius up to minus eight or minus six let's say even zero in a very short period of time i find i struggle with it more than when it drops down it's very very strange living in a place where the temperature can swing greatly is a massive thing i have to put up with and in saskatchewan this tends to be a more major issue in the fall and spring but some winters it can be where it's very up and down as well as you get some breaks from the very, very frigid temperatures and then it'll kind of swing back and forth. And those years I tend to struggle a little bit more than when it decides that it's just gonna go really, really cold for a long time. I do have to admit that it's hard on a person to be dealing with those really, really cold temperatures for a long period of time, just mentally. Now, when it's often really, really cold, it's often sunny because it's often in an Arctic high. So there's not a lot of clouds around, which is kind of nice. You can't really be outside though, because it's dangerous to be outside when it's minus 30 for a long period of time. You can get frostbite very, very quickly, even more so when it's minus 40. But the thing is that it's very hard on a person to not be able to like go out of the house because you're not able to really spend time outside. You're not really able to enjoy that fresh air. So you kind of really get sick of being in your house. It's where cabin fever actually comes from. And it's why when it tends to warm up in the spring, we all get a little bit excited because we haven't been able to get out as much as what you can in more milder climates. This up and down frequency and extreme temperature changes is why I tend to both love and despise, I would say, fall and spring because you're more likely to have these 
frequent swings when you're in the fall or spring. Now personally spring is like one of my favorite seasons because everything is coming out of hibernation. You get the excitement of having warmer temperatures. I just love spring because everything is coming back to life after the natural rest in the cycle of nature. And so it's both a positive and negative time of year and at the same time because it's like often up and down it can be very very hard on me in terms of migraines now i find that spring and fall are the worst for me but neither one really stands out as being automatically always the worst where i dread that particular season i haven't really noticed that actually like i haven't really noticed a major difference between the two because i often don't struggle as much going from a warmer temperature to a colder temperature, I would say spring is maybe a little bit more difficult because you're often going from those lower temperatures to the higher temperatures. But to be honest, I haven't really like sat there and journaled it out to know for sure. Yeah, this one is definitely worse, but I know that I've often been the sickest in spring this is not really due to the weather for me this is because of the timing of when medications were being tried and all of that so like the spring of 2019 was the worst but in terms of like last year I don't think there was much of a difference in terms of what was worse like the spring or the fall and I was actually pretty stressed out in the last fall because I was knew I was getting close to my first meditation retreat. There's the stress of, of the travel with that that I was kind of excited and nervous for. So you've got other factors you got to bring into the equation. For me, I can't really remember or really think of which season if I was to say, oh, this season is for sure the worst. I can't really pinpoint that down. I feel like I notice it more in the spring, but honestly, I think it depends on how much the weather is changing back and forth in either season. And and actually like in terms of like which season is the best I would say summer is probably the most steady in terms of weather patterns and all of that but honestly like each season has their negative things so in winter it's snowstorms and if the temperature goes up and down it can do that even in the dead of winter. Summer can have its negatives too because you've got the really, really hot temperatures and I find that really, really hot temperatures combined with the Humidex value with having a chronic illness, it's just rough on you. Like it's rough on you in the opposite way that the really, really frigid temperatures are. Another big reason that this can cause issues with migraines is because Barometric pressure changes are another big factor as well. So it's not just the temperature swings, but a major low pressure system such as a hurricane, for those of you who are in hurricane areas, I know I have a lot of friends who are in places like Florida or, you know, that part of the United States and they have a hurricane come through and they're like in a lot of pain. So hurricanes can be one. And in the same way, snowstorms for my people and like my friends in my area can also be pretty rough. Like you can get a weather pattern where it's a constant amount of snowstorms coming from in all different directions. And you can feel the couple of days before that snowstorm comes in. I know for me, I find that I'm sore achy everywhere I'm just I'm exhausted I'm tired I'm just not moving the way I should be sometimes there's a migraine on top of that depending on where I am with needing my aim of egg just having a low pressure system come through the drops it enough to notice it I don't feel like I notice every single low pressure system that comes through but if it's a big one yeah I tend to notice it and actually one of the reasons why I got sick a couple of weeks ago and actually had to go home early was because it was a temperature swing combined with my period that caused the bucket to overflow. Each amount of water that you pour in is essentially like a migraine trigger, something that can lead to migraines. Now, having it so that your maybe one or two maybe doesn't overflow your glass of water or bucket, but then having that 
third one may be the thing that pulls you over. But the thing is, is if certain things are happening that are out of your control, your your bucket can be higher or filled up more than what it would normally. So it doesn't take as much to overflow it. You have your triggers that fill up your glass of water, your bucket. It's just essentially the container doesn't matter. But then what it takes to overflow that may change as I just described. Each trigger represents like uh, something that can cause your bucket to overflow. And then when it actually overflows depends on how full your glass is, how full you'll and what triggers you're dealing with in terms of like what will actually overflow the bucket essentially. Sometimes your glass or your bucket is a certain amount of fullness already and then it takes a lot less to have it overflow. A couple weeks ago when I was dealing with this, I would say my glass was like probably almost to the top as it was with everything else that I was managing. But then you've got those other triggers and the weather just pushed it over the edge essentially. And like a lot of like the biggest triggers that I have are things that are not under my control. So a lot of people will be like, well, why can't you just get rid of your periods? I can't because that often involves hormonal birth control. And because of my history with IIH, I am unable to be on hormonal birth control. I am not really going to get into that here, but that's essentially why I can't get rid of my period. And I haven't really looked into birth control options beyond hormonal stuff because I really don't need it myself. I've mentioned that before. Actually, in the live on Sunday, I mentioned a little bit about the birth control stuff. I haven't covered it very much because like I said in the live, I'm just not there in my life yet. So that's why I haven't covered it. It depends on like what all is going on as to whether maybe a low pressure system might trigger a migraine. And depending on what I'm experiencing in terms of like all the other triggers, it is very like the Barometric pressure changes are predictable in the fact that it almost always leads to problems, but whether or not a particular low may cause problems, on the other hand, is subject to the bucket example. I have actually nicknamed this my personal superpower, but unlike those superheroes that you see in the movies, this is often not a positive superpower and when combined with other things that trigger my migraines it can make for a doozy of a migraine attack so as i was saying earlier in the podcast it's not easy sometimes to be managing these major triggers all at once because sometimes no matter what you do all it can take sometimes is a little bit of stress and then having my period along with a massive low pressure system and I'm in a migraine. You do everything you possibly can to control the things you can so that you can essentially prepare for the things you can't. And I tell this to people all the time, like I manage the things and can control the things I can, but this is why I am so strict about taking care of the things that I can't that I can control because when it comes to things like weather changes and my period, I have zero control over whether those happen. If you're wanting to follow me across social media, you can do so on Instagram at Awareness with Ashley, same as on TikTok. And I release short videos a couple times a week usually. And then you can find me on Facebook at Ashley Stewart and that's the same on YouTube. And then on Twitter, you can find me at Ashley Stewart 94 So just an important note is that I will not be having a podcast this next week. I have a big family thing happening on Sunday, so I'm not going to have time to make a video for next week. As well as on top of that, I want to have a little bit of an extra break next week just because I do work on Saturday. So I do want to give myself some rest because I'm going to need it. It's hard switching from working the Saturday to having another five days again. And with it being pretty much full time, it's it takes all my energy. Now, this usually only happens once every three weeks. So it's not a huge deal. And 
Like I've been managing it okay, but now that I'm getting into spring, I'm probably going to have to be a little bit more strict with this. So I'm going to do as many episodes as I can, but I can't guarantee that there's going to be a guaranteed podcast every week. I am going to try and stick with the live shows weekly. Now, this means that also I am taking a complete break from all of my video content next week, except for probably shorts. Shorts I should be able to do, but there will not be a live stream on Sunday and there will not be a podcast next week because I want to be able to have that time with my family for that particular thing. So I hope to see you guys the week after next. And please, if you're listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review because it helps grow the reach of the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming content. I'm actually thinking about switching again back to YouTube for my live streams, so that'll help you catch any of those live streams. Because I think the problem is is that Facebook isn't notifying people. I know I have that problem particularly too with my own stuff that I follow on Facebook and I get really, really frustrated that I don't get notifications. So it's quite possible that the reason why I'm not getting any live viewers is that it's just not notifying. So that is something that Facebook really needs to fix. But if you're wanting to, make sure you hit the like and follow button on Facebook and make sure you have your notifications turned on for uh, all the notifications so you don't miss those live shows. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps get the show out there. Hope to see you again next week for our next episode. Bye everyone.